Connor Cook seems to do a nice job today of moving the offense up and down the field. What have you seen from him the past couple of weeks since he's been in Napa? Well, he's made great strides. He, uh, since he stepped foot here in Napa, um, he hasn't turned the ball over. He's made good decisions. He audible two or three times today to big plays. He's thrown the ball short, medium, and deep accurately, and he's shown really good command. And uh, this will be a good test for him Friday night. He'll get a, a, a good amount of playing time. Coach, you had a good connection with Martavis today. Is Martavis slated to get a full set of run in the preseason? Well, Martavis is, is a, he's not a good talent. He's a great talent. And we're going to continue to work him into our offense. And uh, today showed, I think, what he's capable of doing. But to answer your question, uh, we, we have big plans for him. John, do you almost get more out of these two days than, than you do of a preseason game, especially for the vet guys who maybe go? Yeah, that's, 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 you just caught it there. That's the, uh, the thing I like the most. You go into the preseason game, number one preseason game Friday night, and you're not going to play your starters. Uh, if you do, you're not going to play them very much, but they got quality reps. You're seeing Derek Carr versus Matt Stafford, blitz pickup, nine on seven, two minute drill, move the ball. And it's as close to the real deal as you're going to get. So uh, you get a lot of work done, and now you taper it off for the, the first team guys, and you get a chance to really isolate who you want to see in the preseason game. I think it's going to be real beneficial. Coach, for us Detroit guys out here, you got some local products on your roster. Just the impression Maurice Hurst has made early on for you guys with what he's done um, well on the field. Love Hurst. He's uh, been well coached at Michigan. He's polished. Uh, he's got a great motor. Um, why we traded up to get him. He's exactly what we thought he was. He's going to continue to get better. I think going up against Osemele and Gabe Jackson and Hudson all camp has made him better. It's made him stronger. It's made him play with better technique and leverage. He still has a ways to go, but uh, he and P.J. Hall both uh, give us an element, I think, that we need here. There was a few turnovers on the first day. You said you were not Are you seeing you out there today? Is that a yeah, we had uh, two tip balls yesterday. Those things happen, uh, one in seven on seven, one in a two-minute drill. Um, we're not cut blocking, so sometimes tip passes happen in practice. But, um, yeah, we, we are stressing the ball every day. You see it before practice. We're trying to take the ball away on defense, and we're trying to take care of the ball on offense, and it's a winning edge in pro football or any level of football. But I'm pleased with uh, the way we responded today. Do you have any indication yet on when – when Penn might return? No, I don't. I do not. He's getting close. I think uh, Rod Martin, our trainer, is pleased with uh, the progress he's made. Hopefully, uh, hopefully that, that time is, is soon. Hey, Coach, a lot of fans were very excited to see you. I, I was in the stands interviewing people for KTBS radio. And uh, what do you say to them? What do you have to say to them, particularly at this time in the year? Well, I've tried to say it all along. I even said it at Ricky Sports Bar before I came up here. I, I try to thank the Raider fans for their support as much as possible. And I don't make any promises. I just say that we're going to try to give uh, the best effort we can. And it's an honor to be back here. And it's a great story. But I also, you know, just want to do everything I can to try to try to help this team win again. But I, I love the Raider fans. I love Oakland. And that's the primary reason I'm standing here. John, kind of following you. Jared Cook and Jared Perry have had a field day against the Black Eagles. Well, we want to feature the tight ends the last couple days. Honestly, we we think Jared Cook is a rare receiving tight end, and uh, we think Carrier is interesting. I think he's been under the radar. He played wide receiver in college. We acquired him from the Rams. We think he's he's an intriguing mismatch problem for some teams. So we want to look at different personnel groups. We're trying to. Like I said when I got here, you know, we might go back to 1978 and be a, a two-back, full-back oriented team. We might not. We might use two tight ends. We might use three. And we might use one. So we have a lot of different personnel groupings and packages, just like every team I know of in this league. And the best group to help us win that particular day is the guys we're going to feature. But um, we did feature the tight ends the last two days. John, kind of following up on the, the fans' question. I know it's the first preseason game. This will be your first game back in Oakland. I doubt you've really given it much thought, but do you expect it to be, for the fans, a little different atmosphere than maybe a first preseason game? Simply, They're all the same to me and Raider fans. You know, you <laughs> got to understand that. The preseason game, postseason game, um, pickup games in Oakland, it's it's all the same. But you you are know, looking, you I am looking forward to it. I am looking forward to it big time. I've got some 
some things obviously I got to work out, you know, anticipating situations, communicating with coaches in the press box, you know, the referees on the field, the new rules interpretations. Uh, so I got to I got to work myself through calling plays again and managing some tough situations and um, I'm anxious to see if I can if I can do it. You figured out how much uh, you're going to go with Carr and the starters? Not much. I, I'm not I don't have an official count, but this game's not about our, our uh, about Derek Carr, not yet. It's about uh, finding the right 53 men. And uh, I think you saw today, we, we got a lot of contenders. There's a lot of guys that have put themselves on the brink of making this football team. And we got to make sure we give them every opportunity to showcase their skills. Obviously, we got a number of guys injured, beat up. Uh, so availability will have a lot to do with who plays with who. Coach, you had a couple of high school football teams out here, Napa and Vintage High. Why do you guys want to have those guys out here? And what do you think they learned from you? Well, we love high school football. And you know, I think it's smart for everybody in this level, pro football, NFL, to give back to youth football. You know, we got a problem, I think, in this country. The game is under siege by a lot of people who don't think it's a safe game. They don't think it's a good game anymore. And I think that's hogwash. You know, we got to encourage kids to play, get the benefits of being on a team, and try to support these programs because um, they're not getting much support anymore. So we want these kids to come out, see some of the guys they look up to, get some autographs, and get excited about their season. Do you, do you think the pro, the pro game has been affected yet by attitudes towards youth football? Are fewer young athletes getting into football? Do you fear that? I don't know. I, I got a strong opinion on that. I just drive around the streets. I don't see kids playing in the yards like they used to. So that's for another day. I just want to encourage kids, uh, if they do play football, you're going to learn about mental and physical toughness and teamwork and sportsmanship and accountability and all the qualities I think that make a young man a man. With first game coming up, are you giving any thought to the national anthem before the game starts and whether the have you talked to the team about it? I haven't, I haven't yet. I haven't yet. I, uh, I have not yet. But uh, I'm proud and I'm going to stand and I'm excited for the national anthem. I'm excited to play on Friday night. Time for two more guys. Obi wasn't here yesterday and today, and Seth wasn't out. Seth Roberts was out there today. Seth, Seth got uh, Seth sore. We didn't play Seth today. Uh, hopefully, we have him available here in the next day or so. Uh, Obi has has had a flare up, uh, lower body injury of some kind. We're still uh, looking into that. Last how, one? how much uh, you plan to ramp up? your playbook in, in the first couple preseason. Do you, you want to throw a lot at these guys and see how they handle it, or, or do you get into that? There's a fine line. We have a big playbook for this game because if you give them a small playbook, that's what they study for four days. <laughs> so if you give them a whole big playbook, they got to study the whole gamut. And they really don't know what you're going to call. And you have to have a big playbook, I think, because after the second quarter, you run out of players. You know, you don't have the same receivers that you want to call a play for in the third quarter. You might get a guy nicked up and you can't use a two tight end set. So you have to have some adaptability. And with that said, you have to have a pretty thick nucleus of plays available. And uh, I like it because it makes them study.